When the Center for Autism at University of Houston clearly got established in 2008, uh, all of our programs are pretty much geared toward younger children, but uh, shortly after we opened our doors, I started getting contacted by parents of uh, children who were older and parents of adults yeah. wanting to know what services were available for them. And so I started looking into it and realized that there had been very little research conducted with adults, particularly adults who are considered high functioning, adults who have no intellectual disabilities, and yet uh, they have problems. Yeah. Um, and one of the biggest ones that I found when I did the research was in obtaining and maintaining employment. In fact, the majority of them are unemployed, yeah. uh, which I found really surprising considering they had no intellectual disabilities and were quite capable of doing all kinds of important things for our society. Um, and then, so I, that kind of uh, caught my interest. And then, it's hard to say exactly how I put the two together, but we have a, 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 camp, a, a clinic on campus where we, we provide early intervention services to young children with autism. And I started thinking about some pot potential vocational training programs for individuals who were uh, high functioning. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started thinking about how we provide very structured training. So when we're teaching someone to work with a young child with autism, we provide very structured training, immediate feedback, and many of the procedures that we're teaching uh, them to use with young children um, are pretty invariant, very scripted. And from what I was hearing in the research, uh, there has been some studies where they interviewed people, adults with high functioning autism, about employment and why they had trouble at their pr uh, prior jobs. And a lot of it had to do with um, inadequate feedback, inadequate training, intolerant coworkers. And I started thinking about the way behavior analysts typically train their therapists. So what I decided to do was do a pilot study. And initially, we was just going to be all in role play. So they weren't going to actually work with any young children. Uh, but I had never worked with this population. I'd never worked with adults with high functioning autism. So I didn't know what to expect. And it was just amazing. Um, they picked it up so quickly that we quickly added a phase two to the pilot study and had them actually working with a young child too. Initially they learned uh, the components of discrete trial teaching uh, and they did that in role play and then we had them work with a young child uh, teaching them a similar skill and we showed not only did their skills generalize to the young child but we showed acquisition of the young child in that skill too. One thing we also did, it's, it's, it's one thing to, you know, come up with very objective definitions of correct use of procedures we're teaching, but there might be some qualitative aspects to teaching that aren't captured by our system. And so in addition to taking data on their behavior in terms of what they were doing when they were teaching, we also showed uh, video clips of them uh, teaching to three experts in behavior analysis. We didn't tell them anything other than uh, we would like you to rate this. This is a newly trained person. And we had them use a rating scale and rate the, um, how effective they thought they were, um, how likely they would be to hire them. And we had them rate our participants as well as an undergraduate student who had no developmental dis no, no disability and but had never you know, it was a novice, and we just trained her to do the same thing. We put her through the same training, mm -hmm. and we also had them rate one of our graduate students in behavior analysis. And what we found was the experts gave similar ratings to the undergraduate student and the graduate student, but lower ratings to our participants, even though the accuracy was the same. They were just as accurate as our undergraduate student and our graduate student. So clearly there were some qualitative aspects of their maybe voice, their, the tone of their voice, mm -hmm amount of eye contact, things like that. And so I think that that would be something to work on next, is looking at that and coming up with, with ways to teach that as well. We're interested in expanding the teaching to other uh, ABA methodologies. And I'd also like to look at other vocations as well, and just looking at vocational skills and the types of skills needed to uh, be successful on the job.